Hey guys, this is GPCS. We are talking about a Hollywood style problem today, uh, which is if you have seen the Die Hard series, what happens is uh, John McCain goes and I'll just write that down the Die Hard 3 movie. In that, there's a scene in which there's two water jugs. Water jug 1, water jug 2. The first one has 5 units of capacity, the second one has 3 units of capacity. Uh, and what you need to do is you need to fill one of the bottles with four units of water. Okay, so you can take your time trying to figure out this problem. It's a it's an interesting thing, but we we'll be solving a more generalized approach to this. In fact, let's just solve this. Uh, there's an infinite reservoir also that we have. So let's say there's a river, okay, in which you can dump as much water as you like, and you can also pick up as much water as you like. So the first thing that we are going to do is, if you have already tried solving this, is fill this bottle to the brim, five units over here. You dump that in this three unit bottle. So that's three units over here. Uh, five minus three is just two units over here. Now, you take this three unit bottle and dump it into the river. Not the entire bottle, just the, just the water. Which leaves zero units over here. Now, what you can do is you can transfer the two units into this bottle, two units here, and then zero over here. And you can take this now, uh, these two units, I'm just keeping them that way. Uh, fill this to the brim, five units. And because the remaining amount here is just one unit, you can take these five units, dump in as much as you can, which will be one unit. So that'll be five minus one, which is four, and that's the answer. Okay, you're seeing that you needed four units to save the city, and the city is saved. So uh, this is one variation of the problem. I'll just give you another two variations of the problem rather. So the first one is going to be you have four units of water and three units over here, and you need to fill in two units. Okay, so the answer is pretty similar. What we do is we fill in all four units here. We dump as much as we can into this three unit bottle. So that we can see units here and one unit over here. Now you dump this entire thing in the river. That becomes zero. Transfer one here, which becomes one. This becomes zero. Now you need two units. So the simplest way to do this is to uh, fill in four units. From the river here. Now dump as much as you can, which is the remaining two units over here. So four minus two gives you two. That's it. We have two units of water in this bottle. Right? So this is also a victory for us and the city saved again. But in a very sad story, uh, what's going to happen is you will have six units of water in this one, three units of water in this one. And you need to fill two units. Okay, and I guarantee you, whatever smart cop is there, they're not going to be able to solve this problem, at least mathematically. So now let us analyze this problem. What you need to answer is that is the quantity C possible? So is C possible to obtain? Alright, and to get this. You need to see the possible set of values that A and B can create. Okay, so in this set, some of the obvious values are A and B. Because all you need to do is just take A, fill it to the brim, and you'll have A liters of water and similar with B. If B is larger than A, then you can get another quantity, which is B minus A. You just fill B to the brim. Then you dump as much as you can into A and you'll come down to B minus A. Right? Here there are two possibilities. If B minus A is greater than A, then you can dump all of the water back again into A. After clearing A, you can dump all this water and you'll get B minus 2A. Alright? Otherwise, if B minus A is actually less than A, then what you can do is you can take all of this water, dump all of it into A. That will transfer the water over here, and this will come down to zero. Now what you can do is 
you can fill B to the brim, getting B liters. Dump as much as you can into this, which gives you B minus A minus B minus A. All right, because the remaining quantity here was A minus B minus A, right? And you subtracted the remaining quantity from this. So that's why we have this reasonably complicated equation. And so on and so forth. So these are the set of possible values that we have, assuming that all of them are greater than zero. If you have a look at this set of possible values, what you'll come to the conclusion is that um, you, you'll see that you have a linear combination of x Now, if you see the set of possible values that you can have, you'll come to con now if you see the set of possible values that you can have, you'll come to the conclusion that A and B have a linear combination with coefficients x and y such that this value is greater than or equal to zero. And where x and y can both take positive and negative values. So x comma y belongs to the integers right and any possible combination which is greater than or equal to zero falls in the set of possible values that you can have so this is a linear combination of x and y now let's get back to the point that we were saying that b minus 2a is possible what if b minus 2a is actually greater than a so another possible value if, if there was b minus 2a in this job, what we could have done was dump as much as we can into this, leaving us b minus 3a. And using the same logic again and again, maybe we can get in a set of possible values b minus 3a, b minus 4a, and so on and so forth. Up to what point? b minus p into a, where p is an arbitrary number, has to be greater than or equal to zero. All right. So what is this number p? Dividend, or rather, yeah, dividend minus divisor into coefficient p is greater than or equal to zero, which means that this is the remainder. Okay. So what I'm getting at is b mod a which actually gives you the remainder r is a possible value in this set and at this point it should strike you if you already know the Euclid's algorithm that this problem has something to do with the greatest common divisor because the Euclid's algorithm has suspiciously you know the same proof as this thing so in a contest, usually, you know, you don't mathematically prove everything and come to the logical conclusion that this is going to be the answer. It's more about the intuition and the understanding that this might work. And then you go down that path and actually prove that, yes, this is working. So the Euclid's algorithm actually has a lot to do with subtracting uh, the two numbers and finding out the greatest common divisor. In fact, it goes to the point exactly as we are, that it goes to the remainder and then finds the greatest common divisor. So I'll just write down the GCB algorithm. GCB stands for the greatest common divisor. So GCB of two numbers A and B is a factor such that uh, is a factor for both A and B such that it is of the greatest possible value. So taking an example, GCB of 30 comma 15 is 15 and GCD of 30 comma 27 is 3. All right, uh, and Euclid designed an algorithm for this, which is the GCD of numbers A and B is equal to the GCD of B comma A mod B, right, which is the remainder. So what's happening is that A is being swapped by B and B is being replaced by A mod B. So this number, both these numbers are constantly reducing. Here the assumption is that A is greater than B, greater than or equal to. So these two numbers are constantly reducing 
and therefore GCD has to converge to a point up to what point? If B is equal to 0, then return GCD of, in fact, return A. That's the base case. And otherwise, just use the Euclid's algorithm, which is return GCD of B comma A mod B. All right, that's how simple the Euclid's algorithm is. Literally, just two lines of code if you are using the recursive implementation. So this is great. Now let us prove that uh, the linear combination of these two numbers A and B is closely linked to the GCD of the two numbers. All right, so this is a mathematically intense proof. Uh, put your thinking caps on and let's go. The first thing to notice is that the GCD of A comma B divides both A and B, which means that any linear combination of A comma B, such as X into A plus Y into B, is definitely divisible by the GCD of A comma B. To prove this, we say that x into a plus y into b is equal to some quantity m, where m is the smallest possible positive value that you can get through this linear combination. All right, and now we'll see how the GCD works with m, which is the smallest possible positive value. All right, so GCD of a comma b definitely divides a. That's the definition. GCD of a comma b of course also divides b. m itself is equal to some quantity x into a plus y into b. Now you see that a is divisible by gcd, b is divisible by gcd, so gcd of a comma b divides m itself, which means that the gcd has to be smaller than that quantity it divides. So gcd of a comma b is less than or equal to m, and that's the first point. Now m is the smallest positive linear combination. So what we are going to try to do now is express a in terms of m. So we are going to divide a, which means that there'll be a quotient and a remainder, meaning that q is the quotient into m plus r is equal to a, right? This is true for all numbers. So we are just dividing a by m. Now, a itself is equal to q into x into a plus y into b plus r, just substituting that equation. So you, when you put r on the LHS and you take this quantity and put it on the RHS, uh, 1 minus x into q into a minus y into b, so putting that in brackets, gives us that r itself can be defined in terms of a and b. So r is a linear combination of a and b. And that's important to know. Because we just defined that m is the smallest possible positive quantity for any linear combination of a and b, right? So r itself is a linear combination of a and b, let's say capital X and capital Y. It has to be less than m. It has to be greater than or equal to 0, which means, remember, m is positive and r is smaller than that and is a linear combination of a and b, which means r has to be equal to 0. All right, that's important. m is a linear combination. There is no smaller quantity which is positive and a linear combination uh, which is which is actually smaller than m. So r has to be equal to 0 and hence m divides a because the remainder is 0, r is 0. And with a symmetric argument, we can say that m divides b. We can use the same equation, all right, and substitute b. So m is a factor of both a and b. This is interesting because the GCD has to be greater than m then. This is greater than actually. So the GCD of a and b has to be greater than or equal to m. So we have two combinations, two equations with us. GCD of a and b has to be greater than or equal to m and GCD of a and b has to be less than or equal to m. Which means there's just one satisfying possibility which is m is equal to the GCD of a and b. All right, And that's what we were looking to prove. This means that every linear combination is actually a multiple of the GCD of A and B. And therefore, it is divisible by the GCD of A and B. Conversely, 
every multiple of the GCD of A and B has to be a linear combination of A and B. As you can see, it is some quantity P into X into Y, or rather X into A plus Y into B. So that's the two proofs that we need on linear combinations. So finally, coming back to saving the city with these two jugs of A and B, we know that it's a linear combination that we can form using these two jugs, x into A plus y into B. And we also have proven that this has to be divisible by the GCD of A and B. So can C be formed? Can, can we get C liters of water to save the city? This is only possible if C is a linear combination and therefore it has to be divisible by this. So if C is divisible by the GCD of a comma b and if c is less than or equal to the maximum among the two quantities then the problem is solved all right then and only then is the problem solved otherwise the city is destroyed <laughs> sad story <laughs> in case you want to know how to find c which is a different problem then you can have a look at the paper in the description below it gives a, a comprehensive proof of all of these concepts about the GCD, about the linear combination, and also about how to find C. So that's an interesting bit, but uh, it's out of scope for the particular problem that we are dealing with, which is uh, the hacker rank problem of GCD. So I have all the relevant links mentioned in the description below. Two videos that I would like to point you out to are the explanation video for Euclid's algorithm and the code for Euclid's algorithm. So check them out. If you want notifications for further videos, you can subscribe. Uh, I'm actually using the community tab quite often now. So if you want to click on the bell icon or you want to like this video, you're welcome to do that, of course. <laughs> you're more than welcome to do that. Um, if you have any doubts or suggestions, of course, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to help. See you next time.